హలో ఆల్ అందరికీ నమస్కారం వెల్కమ్ టు ప్రాగ్మా ఎడ్యుకేషన్ బ్యాక్ వన్స్ అగైన్ అందరికీ తిరిగి ప్రాగ్మా ఎడ్యుకేషన్కు స్వాగతం దిస్ వీడియో ఈజ్ ఆన్ హౌ టు ప్రిపేర్ ఫర్ ఇండియన్ ఎకానమీ టాపిక్స్ అండ్ ఎస్పెషలీ ఫర్ గ్రూప్ వన్ వీ విల్ బీ బైసెక్టింగ్ ద సిలబస్ ఆఫ్ గ్రూప్ వన్ అండ్ విల్ బీ లుకింగ్ ఇన్ టు హౌ టు ప్రిపేర్ ఫర్ ఈచ్ ఆఫ్ ద టాపిక్స్ అండ్ హౌ టు డివైడ్ ద హోల్ ఎకానమీ ప్రిపరేషన్ దిస్ ఈస్ ఆ సచ్ ద ప్రిపరేషన్ స్ట్రాటజీ ఫర్ యూపీఎస్సీ ఆల్సో బికాస్ ఎకానమీ ఈజ్ ఎ మిక్చర్ ఆఫ్ బోత్ స్టాటిక్ అండ్ డైనమిక్ టాపిక్స్ హెన్స్ ఎకానమీ షుడ్ బీ ప్రిపేర్డ్ ఇన్ ఏ మిరియడ్ ఆఫ్ వేస్ దట్ విల్ బీ డిస్కసింగ్ ఇన్ దిస్ వీడియో మై సెల్ఫ్ భరత్ భూషణ్ రాళ్ళపల్లి మేనేజింగ్ డైరెక్టర్ ప్రాగ్మా ఎడ్యుకేషన్ అండ్ యూపీఎస్సి మెంటర్ ఫర్ ఇండియన్ ఎకానమీ ఆల్సో దిస్ ఈజ్ అన్ ఇంట్రడక్షన్ ఆల్సో టు అవర్ మాడ్యూల్ ఇన్ టు ద ఎకానమీ సో దిస్ ఈజ్ రిగార్డింగ్ ఇండియన్ ఎకానమీ ప్రిపరేషన్ ఫర్ కాంపిటేటివ్ ఎగ్జామినేషన్స్ అండ్ ఎస్పెషలీ గ్రూప్ వన్ సిలబస్ దట్ విల్ బీ లుకింగ్ ఇన్ దిస్ వీడియో సో ఇండియన్ ఎకానమీ ఈజ్ జనరలీ వన్ ఆఫ్ ద ఫోర్ కోర్ సబ్జెక్ట్స్ ఇన్ ఎనీ కాంపిటేటివ్ ఎగ్జామినేషన్స్ ద అదర్ త్రీ బీయింగ్ పాలిటీ హిస్టరీ జాగ్రఫీ సో Indian economy is one among these four core. So it constitutes equally that much amount of weightage also based on the marks that also we will be looking into uh, based on the scheme of examination that is released by Telangana State Public Service Commission. So Indian economy is such a crucial subject and even concerning both prelims and mains it has equal amount of weightage almost one fourth or to say it one fifth. so based on the weightage on the marks based on the scheme of examination also we will be arriving at the same figure we will be looking shortly so indian economy is such a crucial subject for any competitive examination preparation so let us look into how to prepare for indian economy then economy parts how we will have to segregate the syllabus into is you will have to segregate the total syllabus into three static parts concept 1 and dynamic i would say conceptual is also static part but it has its own importance in both prelims and also forming the foundation for studying or reading the further subjects for mains especially so what constitutes each of these i'll give you in a brief and later we'll get on into the syllabus and you can segregate all the topics into these three categories for your preparation purpose static includes all the background of economy as into what kind of subject the economy is how it will have to be read or what constitutes economy so all the basics on the economy next basics on the indian indian economy especially as to what had happened in the past what is our indian economy based on what is the structure what was its structure before and what is its structure now how it is changing what are its challenges and all that comprising background on the indian economy and all those sectors and everything will be static part next other than this uh, in static part you will have uh, what you say budget and survey it will be in the dynamic part when it is released the survey and budget respectively and once you study complete and prepare notes for it it will be in your static preparation all these topics you will have to have a backup notes or revision notes in order to complete your revision in three ways like revision in one week revision in one day revision in one hour this is one of the best strategies so for one hour you only refer to the bullet points for one day you look at the headings and the subheadings or what topics are into each topic or each subject in one week you will have a glance into what each of these are so you should have a revision strategy in that that manner 
this is applicable for all subjects which are which are having dynamic parts and for economy especially this will this should work and this will help so prepare your notes and revision strategies while you are preparing because once for all you will finish it and you will keep revising it from time to time you will not not find a reason or there should not be need to visit the subject once again to start from the scratch it will kill a lot of time in your preparation so plan your revision and notes properly it will help you a long way in actually succeeding any competitive examination so budget and survey actually come in static and other institutions all financial institutions why they are established and everything financial institutions you can find about world bank imf and other basic world financial institutions as to why they have come into existence why they are existing and what role they play in the economies of whole world and what role they play in indian economy that that much you should learn in static parts next coming to the conceptual parts this includes the economic aggregates inflation banking and money supply public finance trade internal external and everything so these constitute the concepts these are all little conceptual you need to understand a little concept behind these subjects or topics in order to have a good foundation to pick topics from the dynamic and connect them to the static parts you can include here planning all the five year plans and planning commission planning what india did in planning all this all the things that had happened in the past it should be in static and you should be able to connect from the dynamic parts through these concepts you will find something related to inflation in the dynamic resources what are dynamic resources i will tell you newspapers magazines blogs all media and everything you find different terms related to economy you keep finding them you pick from them and through these concepts you connect to any static so that is where most of the preparation will be covered and that is where you can actually guess questions as to how a question can be formed and everything guessing questions is a proper way and it is done uh, by most of the aspirants so you need to guess the questions eventually in your preparation so all these things will come under conceptual there are even other things uh, other topics uh, that are mentioned in the uh, syllabus or otherwise also which will help you form the foundation and complete the whole economy module for upsc or for group 1 for say any competitive examination based on the syllabus but economy is a little dynamic subject it you need to have conceptual understanding then you need to have the background all the static parts then you will be able to pick things from the dynamic and connect to them this is where the questions come even in prelims or in mains they'll try to connect especially in group 1 we will see the economy the whole paper is connected with environmental problems development and environmental problems so it is a perspective that they are already giving in the syllabus as to how you have to approach so you will have to approach the environment part also from economic angle so that is where you can guess or you can assess as to how the syllabus is how the questions can be and everything so this is how you move into these things next coming into the dynamic parts what are the dynamic parts are that keep coming every day in the current affairs in news in newspapers print media electronic media social media blogs magazines everywhere so if there is some issue going on say suppose inflation is rising so why are so everybody so worried about inflation so you need to get into the concept of inflation you should know why inflation what inflation is how it will kick in how how much it is good how it is bad in uh, larger uh, long term and for sustained or higher numbers why why are economy so worried about inflation and what other things that it will affect so you will get through through this concept then from the dynamic you will know the context as to in which context they are actually mentioning inflation in which context are they writing about cpa wpa or any economic uh, aspect for that matter you pick from there and you strengthen your conceptual and you strengthen your statics then you will be able to have connect the questions and you will be able to have give answers also especially in prelims 
if you have conceptual knowledge you will have more than half of the economic economic questions in your hand if you are thorough with the concepts then the from the dynamic parts and connecting to static parts based on that there will be few questions there are increasing number of questions so that's how you cover the syllabus for mains you keep these notes preparing based on the syllabus syllabus should be your bible the syllabus of any competitive examination should be in your mind it, sh it should be on your tongue you you should know in which topic what is the syllabus and based on that you should find out the resources and you will know how far i'll have to cover that subject based on the previous questions and experience so this is how you complete dynamic resources newspapers media magazines next blogs even i would suggest wikipedia investopedia because they give specific definitions and the specific context of the economic terms that you keep facing every day in the current affairs and everywhere if you read static parts well and if you have conceptual knowledge it is only two thirds or it is just above two thirds or 70 75% only remaining you'll have to pick from the dynamic and connect this is where the remaining questions will fall and you should target to have all the 100% of economic questions in your hand not just a 60% that comes from conceptual or not just 30% that comes from here you need to have the focus on attempting and properly attempting with confidence and accuracy you should try for 100% in economy because it's a technical little technical and conceptual subject it will help you gain good amount of marks in any examination so this is how you actually segregate your economy preparation and how you go about it so next we look into the syllabus and you divide all the topics in the syllabus into these three categories then you start preparing your notes and everything so this is how you go about economy syllabus let us see the group one syllabus now so this here is the total economy syllabus of uh, telangana tspsc group one both indian economy and telangana economy let us have a look into let us have a look into each of them so this here is indian economy and development that is one total paper indian economy and development for mains what it includes is the first chapter is on national income concepts and measurement of national income so when you see this when you see the syllabus how do you segregate this uh, topics into the schemes that i have told here let us make the same one here let us use a lot of space static concept one and dynamic this we have seen the segregation now we'll see how we'll have to segregate these topics into each of them first one is national income concepts and measurement of national income so there is a word already here that that gives us a lead that this is in conceptual so this comes in income uh, economic aggregates national income is one of such aggregates there are other aggregates and we'll see into how what and the concepts of measurement of such national income next nominal and real income this is an extended topic of the same and having relation with the inflation we will see inflation in the next chapter eventually structure and growth of indian economy so this where you will have to segregate this part is static so they are asking what is the structure of indian economy so it is already something that is already existing so you read it from the independence time 1947 what was the structure and how it changed 
how our GDP has increased and everything. Then growth of Indian economy. So for last five years, you keep the data with you. You see whether the GDP has grown, fallen and fallen and grown or grown and fallen, everything. Have that data with you. Then that compresses the static. These things you will pick from dynamic again. You will have to go to some blog or website to have the authentic data related to the same. Next, sectoral trends in national income of India. So sectoral trends also include the same thing. You just take the last five years breakup of each sector. Agricultural sectors, industrial sector and services sector. You see how the trends have changed or the, how the trends are moving. That is, what the, that is what is mentioned in the syllabus here itself. Excuse me. Uh, sectoral trends in national income of India. So that is what you keep ready and collect. You, that you will pick from the static and also from the dynamic and keep it ready. So this will cover the total first chapter of the syllabus in here. You have segregated it in dynamic parts you write latest figures. Latest figures of what you will get to know in national income chapter. Like when you cover that concept you will understand which latest figures you will have to look for in the dynamic parts. So this covers the first. The next comes poverty and unemployment. The second chapter itself is poverty and unemployment. Here are the concepts of poverty. So here you will have to cover poverty and unemployment eventually. Income based poverty, non-income poverty, capability approach and measurement of poverty, how it is being measured and what are the trends in poverty. What are the various trends, whether it has increased, it has decreased, number of people are increasing, a number of people are increasing, but the percentage is decreasing. What are the trends? So, our trends in poverty and everything that you will have to read. Then, concepts, estimates and trends of unemployment. These are two most important topics in any economy module, be it any competitive examination. This you will have to read in conceptual, this you will have to pick from here. And you will have to pick from here the latest figures, same for poverty and unemployment. This is for national income chapter. So it, this is like you will have to cover in all three. These things we will cover in the concept. So this is how the second chapter is done. Next is money and banking, third chapter, money supply. So it's a concept, structure of Indian banking. It is static, non-banking financial institutions. It is also there in st static reforms in banking sector, both static and also dynamic. Regulation of credit by RBI. This is also little static, more of a static and conceptual thing. So this you will have to segregate into here. Money and banking. So money and banking will come under conceptual, then uh, a few topics here will come in banking, static, structure of banking and everything. Next dynamic parts, you will have to pick the latest things regarding anything in money and banking, regarding money supply, credit control by RBI. So any, any news regarding RBI, credit control that you hear or any terms that you hear in this concept, you will have to pick from the dynamic again this third chapter is done next comes public finance public finance is just the extrapolation of our household finance Manam, how we do our household finance how we calculate our revenues expenditure income how we segregate so this is just extrapolated into the macroeconomic version to the country when a country does the same thing it's called public finance so it is one of the uh, finest concepts that it should be covered public finance there are ample number of concepts inside public finance topic itself next static uh, we'll just look into what are tax structure so tax structure it should come in static next rental and state taxes static government expenditure in revenue and capital account this will come in both static and dynamic public debt concept 
composition, internal and external debt, concept, monetary policy, fiscal policy, union budget, budget analysis. So this monetary policy and fiscal policy is both static and dynamic. But you will be able to connect these all these topics only if you know the concept, underlying concept here. So all the monetary policies and everything will be covered in here. Only then you will be able to connect the static and dynamic parts. Every three months there will be a monetary policy review committee meeting. So it will it is a dynamic thing. Why why the interest rates are keep changing? Which interest rates are RBI is changing? Why RBI is changing? So you will keep knowing all these things when you learn these concepts and everything. Then you will have to connect them from the dynamic aspects. Next comes planning Indian economy. So planning and everything it comes here in static. Uh, what was uh, public finance also will have to cover here and planning latest developments and everything Niti Aayog related updates there will be various index or indices that is being released by Niti Aayog from time to time health index education index reform index policy implementation index like that so you keep coming across such things in dynamic resources newspapers magazines keep and pick them then you will know the ambit of Niti Aayog what all they are actually doing then the structure of Niti Aayog and everything you will learn here in the static parts that's Niti Aayog then this planning objectives priority strategies achievements are the fire plans till 12th year this is all buried so it's all the history part like you will have to read what were the objectives then, what were the priorities then, what were the strategies then and what were the achievements. Then after that this concept has come inclusive growth. So what is this inclusive growth? You keep coming across this in various dynamic aspects. So you will have to pick from it. Next Niti Aayog, the extension of planning commission. Next LPG reforms. When they came, what were their features and what were the implications of the same? They were implemented way back in 1991 and what are the implications today? So this will complete the fifth chapter. So this is all regarding reforms. LPG reforms and everything. It will come here in static parts. It is like studying the history inside economy. So this has happened something, this had happened in the past, why it had happened everything, we will come to know while we are covering the concept. Well, there are other concepts that need to be covered, majorly inflation, next trade, then the development part as we, as we will be seeing in the, uh, the, the first section of one whole paper is for this Indian economy and development the whole third section the middle section is for telangana economy so this these things are all under conceptual next comes the second section telangana economy so what is given in telangana economy first let us uh, create the same kind of thing once again for telangana economy here static conceptual and dynamic so Telangana economy first chapter is Telangana economy in Hyderabad state so when Telangana was part of Hyderabad state before 1956 so agriculture industry and trade it's a pure static topic that you'll have to pick from any standard book or any Government publication, SCRT or Telugu Academy or anything like that. This was like in Hyderabad state. Next, Telangana economy in United AP. That was between 1956 to 2014. So, this is also static part only. It is buried. You will have to pick it from a standard book or from the history. history. Uh, these aspects deprivation and underdevelopment in Telangana economy uh, deprivation and underdevelopment uh, this is one of the most important topics deprivation and underdevelopment 
this was one of the major regions reasons for the demand for separate telangana state within indian union that you will have to cover why where it was deprived why it was deprived and what were the factors and everything next structure and growth of telangana economy that is the present telangana economy that is formed in 2014 the structure and growth so it is again a static topic itself it's a static topic that you'll have to read next sectoral trends in gsdp so this is both static and dynamic next per capita income income inequalities and poverty so what are the income inequalities and poverty related concepts that are in telangana you'll have to pick from both static here and also from here inequalities and poverty and here one more topic was sectoral trends the sectoral trends in gsdp it is here and there in this income inequalities and poverty you, you learn these concepts in indian economy itself the here when you prepare for here itself these concepts are useful for both here and also the telangana economy this you can say do like before all the concepts will be helpful to understand and establish all the other syllabus related to the same next human resources demographic structure and transition so demographic structure means population how the demography was before and how it was in the middle how it is now and what are it how it has trans tran, transition how it has changed next demographic dividend so what is demographic dividend how you will have to see and what is the status of demographic dividend of telangana sex ratio fertility rate model these are all concepts again so this will come in health health education uh, that is human resource development uh, human resource development includes majorly health then education so these are the major human resources why are they called human resources because if somebody has good health they will be able to work that is why they are human resource and somebody is educated and literated then they can find work and they can be part of economy that is why again it is human resource so two major topics under human resources are education and health these two needs to be totally covered for both india and also telangana when you cover the economy you need to have the background of the situation of public health then education literacy and all these uh, aspects same it 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 is both concepts and also dynamic again health education uh, yes you will have to cover all these topics even in this concepts here this will be covered in development actually health education and uh, the development aspect to it what it is and all it will be covered in economic development chapter so this is these are the aspects here till now we had seen human resource hrd this you will and uh, for these topics of indian economy for upsc civil services ncert is also are, are helpful to form the basis of the background of indian economy and the structure of indian economy and everything even sector wise human geography and everything are covered uh, especially in in ncerts actually so give a good reading of ncerts it will give a base on that you read few standard books for yourself apart from whatever coaching wherever you are taking that is the method you can take so standard book for prelims is uh, ramesh singh and uh, there are books uh, uh, other books also uh, which are famous like uma kapila and other books on indian economy that elaborately covers each of these topics on reforms land reforms lpg reforms planning and so many topics are extensively covered in such books so when you have time you can cover all those uh, aspects try to complete the whole syllabus and have an idea on how the questions could be and how you effectively you can answer what edge you will have in that answer that comes from this dynamic part itself 
what's the latest fact you just incorporate one latest fact in, uh, in your answer in the mains so that gives a notion that you actually know the subject that you are not just goofing around so that's one technique and that is possible when you are strong with the dynamic aspects the latest figures trends and everything that you will be picking from here and connecting to the concepts or the static parts that's how the question will be even in the mains for UPSC, for even group one also, little, at least few of the questions will be in such aspects. Like there is a question, if there is a question on national income topic, it should be something that that should be connecting the both concept and also the latest development or something. So it will be like that. That's how you plan for your preparation and everything. All the topics are covered in uh, Ramesh Singh. And I, I have a module prepared for whole Indian economy that is for 60 hours that com that uh, completes the total UPSC syllabus also. All the things that we have uh, discussed here and many things apart from here are also included in the UPSC syllabus. And for Telangana economy, the total module is around 40-45 hours to cover the syllabus as we, as we have looked just now. This whole syllabus including these concepts. So it, it takes around 40-45 hours to complete the syllabus uh, through my videos so apart from that i suggest you invest double the number of hours that i have taught here based on the based on my uh, teachings then you read for yourself one standard book form the basics through scrts telugu academy So this is natural, you will have to refer to these books to have the foundation on like what happened in the Hyderabad state to Telangana, what was the share of Telangana and what was the Telangana economy then. So it is a historical background, you can only get them from SCRTs and Telugu Academy, the authentic ones and everything. Next 56 to 2014, next after 2014, what's the Sakshran Gorot. So all the new topics are also included in here to form the basics as to what the things are, the static parts in order to have the grip on static parts. The conceptual, again, it's Ramesh Singh or any other book that is in the market that helps you with this concept. Dynamic, you'll have to pick regularly time to frame, time to time regularly from various resources. Especially for Telangana, look for any newspaper that is comprehensively or extensively covering economic issues. Try to find such newspaper and read, start reading that newspaper. Start picking the terms from them try to connect them to the concepts you see in what context it was being mentioned in the dynamic resource then have a notes of it and keep it for your revision and notes that's how you complete one topic you take one topic it's completed so you try to cover all this like as we have seen health education social society social development economic development what are the hindrances in trade aspects on poverty related unemployment latest figures all these things you'll have to be picking from the dynamic resources from time to time even the government official websites that they give the official figures they also can be collected they are the most authentic and try to look for the most authentic and don't try to take whatever information that is there uh, try to get the numbers from official government releases when they come in the newspapers or in the media that's the best thing to do or, or follow so standard current affairs that keep giving that RBI projecting India's GDP growth rate at this much, this much. So all these kinds of facts you keep picking and adding in your notes. That will help you in your revision. But have the whole syllabus in your mind when you prepare and don't lose the focus on the exam. Yes, you gain the knowledge, you become a better person definitely. But do, never, never lose focus on the exam. So try to do that. Next answer writing. One of the most crucial aspects is next answer writing. Now that it is already announced in the notification that prelims will be held in July or August. For Group 1 Telangana, we are talking about. And mains is somewhere in October or November, December they are planning. Not October maybe, practically. Somewhere even if you say December or Jan. How many months are practically left for you if you are appearing or sitting for the mains examination? 
even if it is january next year we are already halfway through the may so it will be june july august september october november december 6 months 6 to 7 months you will have so what you keep doing is uh, all through these 6 to 7 months you are you keep running only behind the knowledge i don't know the concepts i don't have the knowledge what answer should i be writing this is a basic question and this is a basic hurdle that 99% of the students cannot cross i would bet on it so it's a fact based on my practical experience and everything that is why i was so confident regarding that so what you do is write one answer per day don't even start with one answer per day you just start writing 30 sentences each day then one answer per day then you can improve the speed then in, uh, before just before the exam you can start writing one whole exam as it is given in the exam schedule that is how you actually practice because answer writing and mains is endurance you you have ample amount of knowledge but if you don't have the skill to put it on the paper you will be losing a lot in the exam you will be losing a lot in the exam so focus on answer writing how, how much time would it take for you to actually write 30 sentences each day 10 minutes 15 minutes how much time it would take for you to write one answer per day how much time will you get to write one answer in the final exam day 7 minutes 8 minutes this is a maximum you get so you start writing or practicing with 15 minutes then you start getting into doing the whole exam attempting all the answers then you can segregate about the have the tips and tricks in the last moment as to how to approach answers how to gain that little extra edge and marks and all the while you will be gaining the knowledge knowledge is not something you gain today and you forget tomorrow even if you choose to it will be coming with you and you keep adding to it you keep learning and but this answer writing and everything is very very crucial for exam so don't mix these two and don't make your preparation a clumsy affair try to do simple 30 sentence each day then start writing one answer per day after one month so within that six to seven months that we are speaking just within two to three months you will observe changes in your own answer by yourself you keep studying you keep reading newspaper you pick up new vocabulary you start using them in your answers this is a process it happens so but it will have to start somewhere someday so do it do it as you start your preparation don't think about what you are writing in the answer say for example 20 questions out of 20 questions you don't know in the exam after you prepare for these many months example a hypothetical situation i am saying what would you write even then in the examination so start writing such things from today start doing it today it will help you a long way and these are the small things that will take anyone's preparation to any level that they would aspire to take it to because remember there is one concept regarding this competitive examinations that so competitive examinations there is one concept that I had observed in my preparation journey and a small analysis I have done. How much ever tough the exam paper might come, be it UPSC, be it RBA grade B, be it U, uh, group 1 and other examinations that I have faced, how much ever tough the paper might come, be it in prelims or in mains there is a lot there is a section of aspirants or there is a section of students who appear for the exam who actually doesn't let even the tough paper fall below some cutoff i meant to say enta tough paper ochina sare cutoff anedi drastic ga padipodu never it would only fall by few points five six seven marks maybe yantha tough in arani paper so why why it happens is because there is a traditional folk folk 
for that exam who had cracked that code to clear such that prelims or mains irrespective of how the paper is this is the concept this is a concept and this is mostly applicable in prelims rather than in mains because in mains there is one more aspect to it that is endurance that i have told you that is your perseverance how far you will go how how well you can present your answer so how far you are able to push yourself it's a stressful situation but how do you perform under that that is mains so even tough paper concept is applicable here but mostly it is relatable with prelims because there is a very uh, fluid cut off based on which there is eligibility for another examination so everybody will be focusing on that cut off but how much ever the tough paper might come the cut off wouldn't fall below that drastic level any day it's because there are people who are putting enough fight for that exam this is my concept so if you want to be a one that who cracks that competitive examination be in that section of students who put that fight put that fight very strongly and put that fight very effectively so this is my concept actually so this is one way to crack competitive examinations yes i have cracked examinations myself and this is one of the ways to crack the competitive examination and this is the concept behind it be in the traditional folk if you are prepare or if you are a starter for any examination today so 3 years 4 years down the line practically talking touch wood you don't get into any examination or anything you would be a veteran in that examination so be in the traditional folk put up the good fight whenever the notification comes and crack that exam so this is my little concept into the competitive examinations that i wanted to present here so be in that folk who are irrespective of how tough the paper is there may be techniques there may be knowledge there may be anything so try to crack that code for each of the examination through your preparation through your adaptation to that preparation you evolve through it some day you become and you will be a gazetted officer in government of telangana or in government of india so you will be a different person altogether but how do you actually digest that because you are changing in the process and it happens and eventually you will be in that positions and you will be in such situations and you will be able to look life from that perspective also so i wish you all all the very best for all the aspirants who are actually appearing for group 1 telangana now after the notification is out the whole preparation atmosphere has uh, heated up so i wish all the students and the candidates and aspirants who are appearing for group 1 a very very all the best thank you guys signing off for now keep following liking and subscribing us and subscribe to our videos to our channel to have the latest upcoming videos i'll be doing a next video on the whole upsc syllabus it will be on the same lines but we will be breaking up the whole syllabus of upsc for economy and we'll be looking into what resources and everything we'll have to refer for each of them thank you guys signing off for now bharat bhushan lalapalli bye